Every morning as you reach for that bar of soap to cleanse away the night, have you ever stopped to wonder about its journey? The humble bar of soap, a daily companion in our modern lives, holds a fascinating tale deeply intertwined with the annals of human history. Imagine yourself transported back thousands of years to the bustling markets of ancient Mesopotamia or the vibrant bazaars of medieval Europe. Long before the sleek packaging and fragrant varieties we know today, soap making was a craft practiced with reverence and necessity. In these early times, soap wasn't just a luxury or a beauty product. It was a symbol of cleanliness, health, and even status. But with time, the soap, which was just made with herbs and various animal fat formulae, has been changed. So join us as we explore the fascinating journey of how bath soap is made, because behind every bar of soap lies a story waiting to be told. Basically, soap is made from caustic soda in either animal fat or plant oil. It breaks down dirt on surfaces when mixed with water. Soap has been used for a very long time to clean, heal sores on the skin, dye hair, and make salve or medicine for the skin. But now we mostly use soap to clean or smell nice. Roman sources say that soap has been around since at least 600 BC when the Phoenicians made it from goat's fat and wood ash. No one knows for sure where soap came from. The Celts who lived in Britain in the past also made soap. Throughout the Roman Empire, soap was used a lot, mostly as medicine. Soap as a cleaner isn't talked about until the second century AD. It wasn't common in the rest of Europe to use soap until the 17th century. By the 8th century, it was common in France, Italy, and Spain. In England, soap making began around the end of the 12th century. The people who made soap had to pay a big tax on all of it. Every night, the tax collector locks the lids on soap cooking pans to stop people from making soap illegally after work. Soap was a special item because of the high tax, and most English people didn't start using it until the tax was taken away in 1853. During the 1800s, Soap was cheap and popular all over Europe. In the past, people who made soap just boiled a mixture of animal fat and wood ash. Something foamy formed on top of the pot. It turned into soap when it cooled down. Around 1790, Nicolas Leblanc, a French soap maker, came up with a way to get caustic soda, which is sodium hydroxide, from table salt, which is sodium chloride. This replaced the wood ash in soap in 1823, the French scientist Eugène Michel Chevreau explained the process of making soap in chemical terms. This process is called saponification in English. When animal fat is saponified, it breaks down into fatty acids. These acids mix with alkali carbonates to make soap, and glycerin is released as a byproduct. Before the end of the 1800s, soap was made in factories. However, people in rural places like the pioneers in the Western United States still made soap at home. Fat and alkali are the two main things that soap needs to be made. Sodium hydroxide is the liquid that is used most often these days. It is also possible to use potassium hydroxide. Because potassium-based soap dissolves better in water than sodium-based soap, it is also known as soft soap. A lot of shaving solutions use soft soap, either by itself or with sodium-based soap. In the past, animal fat came straight from a slaughterhouse. These days, soap makers use fat that has been broken down into fatty acids. This gets rid of a lot of impurities and makes water instead of glycerin a waste. Soap can also be made with a lot of different kinds of veggie oils, like olive oil, palm kernel oil, and coconut oil. Additives make soap smell better, look better, and have a better structure. Soap is made with fragrances and perfumes added to hide the smell of dirt, and leave behind a fresh smell. Talc, silica, and marble pumice, volcanic ash, are all particles that can be used to improve the quality of soap. Soap that hasn't been dyed is a dull gray or dark color. However, soap is now colored to make it more appealing to buyers. Small companies that make soap still use the kettle method to make soap today. This process can take anywhere from four to 11 days. And because different oils are used, the quality of each batch is different. Around 1940, engineers and scientists came up with a new process known as a continuous process, a better way to make soaps. There are big soap makers all over the world that use continuous processes right now. In the continuous process, soap is made all the time, not just one batch at a time as the word suggests. In the continuous process, technicians have more control over the making process, and the steps are much faster than in the kettle method. 
a lot of soap can be made in just six hours. So first, let's understand the kettle method. In this process, the very first step is boiling. The steel tank known as a kettle can hold several thousand pounds of material and can stand three stories tall. It is used for melting fats and alkalis. A kettle's internal steam coils are responsible for heating and boiling the mixture. As the fat combines with the alkali to produce soap and glycerin, the mixture thickens after boiling. The next step is salting. Now we need to extract the glycerin from the soap. After adding salt to the mixture, the glycerin will drop to the bottom and the soap will float to the top. Then from the base of the kettle, glycerin is retrieved. Now, a powerful caustic solution is added to the kettle to extract the trace quantities of unsaponified fat. We call this phase of the process strong change. The remaining fat is transformed into soap when the mixture is heated to boiling point once more. At this point, the producer has the option of either continuing with the following step or giving the batch another salt treatment. The last and subsequent stage is known as pitching. Adding more water brings the soap in the kettle to a boil once more. At some point, the bulk begins to split in half. Neat soap, a mixture of roughly 70% soap and 30% water, makes up the upper layer. The nigra or bottom layer of soap includes the majority of the water and the majority of the soap's contaminants like dirt and salt. It is removed from the top. After that, the soap is chilled. Just like with continuous process soap, the finishing process is the same. Now we'll try to understand the continuous process. Separating natural fat into its component fatty acids and glycerin is the initial stage of the continuous procedure. A hydrolyzer, a vertical stainless steel column with a barrel-shaped diameter, is the piece of machinery utilized. Some estimates put its height at 80 feet, 24 meters. Accompanying the column are pumps and meters that provide accurate measurement and process management. One end of the column receives molten fat by pumping it in, while the other end receives water heated to 266 degree F, 130 degrees C, and pressured to introduce it. It separates the two components of the fat in this way. As additional lipids and water are absorbed, the glycerin and fatty acid are constantly pumped out. Next, the fatty acids are refined by distillation. Right now, a big slab of soap can be made by pouring the mixture into molds and then letting it set. A specialized freezer is another option for cooling it. Stamping and wrapping are done when the slab is broken into smaller pieces that are bar-sized. From beginning to end, the whole continuous procedure takes no more than a few hours. Extra processing, known as milling, is applied to the majority of toiletry soaps. Compared to non-milled soap, the lathering performance and texture of the milled bar are better. A series of mills, which consist of heavy rollers, are used to crush and knead the cooled soap. This is the ideal moment to add perfumes since the volatile oils in them will not evaporate in the cold mixture. Extrusion occurs after the soap has emerged from the mills and is flattened into a smooth cylinder. Soap that has been extruded is shaped into bars, branded, and then packaged. And there you have it, folks. The bubbly adventure of soap making comes to a sudsy conclusion. Now that you've seen how soap magic happens, are you ready to dive into the foamy fun of cleanliness? Or will you forever see soap as the unsung hero of hygiene? Do tell us in the comments and also subscribe to our channel for more informative videos.